Submarines are often referred to simply as subs for short. Submarines are used by both the military and scientists to explore the depths of the ocean. During times of conflict, the military will deploy submarines to both patrol ocean waters and attack ships belonging to the enemy. Submarines used by the military are often quite large. But have you ever wondered how submarines work when at sea? How do they combat other ships while being in the middle of the sea? Hello and welcome to this episode of High Technology. In this episode, we will talk about the intricacies submarines face in combating ships while at sea. If you enjoy submarines and technology related stuff, then you found the right channel. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you will be notified once we upload amazing videos like this. The United States has a rich history of submarines, beginning with the vessel that is now known as the Turtle. This history dates back many decades. David Bushnell, a graduate of Yale University, is credited with inventing the first submarine. During the time of the American Revolution, the colonists had a covert weapon at their disposal in the form of the submarine to use against the English soldiers. In contrast to what many people think of as submarines nowadays, the Turtle was a wooden craft that could be be operated by a single person and was powered by hand cranks and foot treadles. Despite this, it was able to sneak up on the vessels of the enemy without being spotted. The United States Navy officially took possession of its first modern submarine in April of the year 1900. It was given the name USS Holland or SS-1. It was the very first submarine that the United States Navy ever commissioned into formal service. According to Paul Lucas, a retired lieutenant commander in the United States Navy, he was inspired to become a submariner after watching a TV documentary in the early 1960s titled A Quiet Service. During World War II, submarines were a focal point of the conflict, and the risk simply interested him more and more. What they went through, it inspired him to start reading up on what the submarine force accomplished during World War II. And when it came time for him to enroll, even though he needed his father's permission beforehand, he went ahead and did it anyway, and he joined the submarine force. In today's day and age, the United States Navy cannot function properly without its fleet of submersible vessels. However, before the crew of the submarine can enter the sea, the submarine needs to first pass a series of tests to ensure that it is in proper working order. Certain characteristics are required for a submarine to be able to transport and use warshot tactical harpoon missiles. These capabilities must be present in the submarine. Each vessel is required to undergo encapsulated harpoon certification training and vehicle testing, often known as EHCTV testing, before it is allowed to set sail. This training must be successfully completed. According to the Navy, the harpoon system is a lethal anti-ship capability that can operate in all weather. This is something that can be said about the system. This enables submerged vessels to engage targets at the wider distance, which opens up more tactical possibilities. They were successful in completing their task not just as a result of the lethality of their harpoons, but also due to their ability to remain hidden. Submarines are essential for a wide array of different types of missions. Because of the ability of submarines to control their buoyancy, the personnel of these vessels are also able to select when they want to submerge below the surface of the water and when they want to remain above it, depending on the conditions, of course. Submarines are outfitted with a plethora of necessary components, each of which plays an important part in the overall operation of the vessel. This idea can be understood via the lens of the submarine's periscope as well as its radar system. The radar does a comprehensive search of the surface while enables the periscope of the opposing submarines to be located. When the radar identifies an object, it shifts its focus of detection to the periscope so that the thing can be identified and sorted into the appropriate category. A periscope is a type of gadget that can help people in a submarine navigate and observe their surroundings while still retaining their hidden status. This is made possible by the fact that the periscope itself is covered. Known as the counting tower, this elevated deck can be found on board the submarine. The majority of the time, this platform is armored. You'll find the bridge, which is typically used for surface navigation and communication, atop the tower at its tallest point in its most elevated location. This is similar to other ships in that they also feature feature a bridge where the ship can be directed by its captain. The actual weapons that are carried by a submarine are still another essential component. Submarines make regular and extensive use of torpedoes in a variety of kinds of warfare to bring down hostile ships. They are able to carry 12 or more at once. In 
In their most fundamental form, torpedoes are propelled through the water by means of an underwater tube. A pressurized mechanism causes the torpedo to be launched while the tube fills with water, causing it to become submerged. Contemporary torpedoes are equipped with a safety device that prevents the torpedo from going off unintentionally. Submarine crews may participate in vital training sessions whenever they are not on a mission. A recent exercise called Dynamic Mongoose and Advanced Anti-Submarine Warfare included participation from submarines belonging to nations that are members of NATO. In June of 2022, the maritime drill was carried out in the area compromising the North Atlantic. Dynamic Mongoose is a high-end anti-submarine warfare or ASW exercise that is going to take place in the next few weeks off the coast of Iceland. According to Rear Admiral Ol Morten Sandquist, according to the Navy surface ships from Canada, Norway, the United Kingdom, and the United States joined submarines from France, Germany, Norway, the United Kingdom, and the United States under NATO Submarine Command. The purpose of this exercise was to give the participants training in sophisticated, demanding, and realistic warfare tactics that would help them become more proficient in anti-submarine and anti-surface warfare techniques. It takes place every Every year in the Norwegian Sea. NATO conducted a comparable operation in the Ionian Sea in 2016 named Dynamic Manta. Extreme collaboration between the air surface crew and the subsurface crew was required during the training. These training missions not only helped the team members build morale and teamwork, but they also enabled them to strategize and advance their operational knowledge. Helicopters have a specific function in this type of warfare, including flying missions apart from ships in addition to submarines and other types of ships. They are an important type of craft when it comes to anti-submarine warfare. This enables the helicopters to transmit sonar data on the whereabouts of hostile warships. Helicopters are also a great choice for search and rescue operations since they can be quickly deployed from almost all types of watercraft and are out of the way of attacks that use water-based weapons like torpedoes. The Navy must, however, keep evolving in both peace and war. Recently, when the Navy announced that the unmanned surface vessel Division 1 would be accelerated, they took a step towards acceptance. Unmanned surface vessels, also known as unmanned surface vehicles or unmanned surface crafts, are boats or ships that are operated independently. They are what they refer to as being integrated. The Navy states that as of May 16, it is still considering the best way to incorporate these unmanned surface ships into the Navy. But there are lots of choices. Most notably, mine hunting frequently makes use of USBs. This reduces the possibility of harm coming to those ships during the exercise. At the Naval Station Norfolk, Citadel Shield, Solid Curtain, 2020 Textron Systems displayed its fourth generation CUSV during a force protection scenario. Thanks to technology, the ship can do a number of important tasks such as mine sweeping and neutralization, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance, harbor security and more. It can and prevent the personnel from being in danger. The Navy is now using the Custody, a popular unmanned surface vehicle in the mine clearing operation carried out by an LCS. It would be employed in a force protection mission against terrorists, says John Allison from NAVSEA Warfare Center. Unmanned surface vehicles and unmanned undersea vehicles both perform comparable tasks. When it comes to mental monitoring, various forms of maritime warfare such as mine detection and neutralization, intelligence surveillance and anti-submarine warfare are enabled by them. Divided into two primary groups, autonomous underwater vehicles and remotely operated underwater vehicles. Underwater drones is another name for UUVs. These cars can function subaquatically without a person inside. These vehicles are ideal for scoping out underwater minefields and possibly neutralizing them while submerged. Divers are still required in some circumstances, but the use and diversity of unmanned aquatic vehicles makes it possible to lessen the necessity for specialist underwater dive teams, especially when it comes to tasks like explosive ordnance disposal which also reduces personal injuries. And that wraps up today's video. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down your thoughts for today's episode. Again, this is High Technology, see you all tomorrow.